in santa cruz there's the same divide between federal and local attitudes the implementation of proposition two fifteen is now challenged as being in violation of federal law so we have something of a crisis here in in california they basically threatened us with license revocation if in fact we recommended it we went to court and in fact the court agreed that we really had the freedom to at least recommend it if not prescribe it we're going to do what we can to follow the law at times it's difficult because it doesn't answer all the questions about who can provide marijuana who can grow it how much can they grow there's many unanswered questions but we will do our best to follow 215 kathy got caught up in these unanswered questions marijuana relieves her arthritis the cops wind up coming to my house and i had one little marijuana plant growing and they busted me in my own home they took everything they took my plant they took my tray they took my marijuana everything and you know then i had to go to court and this was before i was involved in wham and they find me they were going to send me to diversion which is uh a drug school where they tell you how bad you are and they show you films about drug use and all that kind of stuff and when i went to the hearing the judge looked at me and you could see obvious deformities and he looked at the da and said well maybe she doesn't want diversion you know there's he said nothing in santa cruz it's nothing in Tulsa, Oklahoma, it's 92 years in jail. In Oklahoma City, people are gathering for a rally to protest Will Foster's sentence. Like Kathy, he was using marijuana to ease the pains of arthritis. The police raided his house looking for amphetamines on a tip from a confidential informer. I mean, he's a, he's a medical marijuana user. He's, he's not one of those people who's just partying around. And they didn't even find any methamphetamine. It's a day Meg Foster will never forget. So as I put my hand on the doorknob to disengage it, the door just exploded inward. I fell backwards onto my five-year-old daughter and knocked her onto the floor. And there was this very large man with no badge dressed um, in what I think of as biker attire. Harley Davidson t-shirt, uh, the high metal boots, with a very large gun in my face and at my head. And, um, I'm sorry. It frightened me badly. Very badly. I don't think I've ever been that scared. I had no idea who these people were. And my daughter is screaming. I leave my mommy alone. And um, I think that was the hardest part. They searched everything. There were 60 plants in the basement and approximately half a dozen of them were about a foot tall, had really just started to bud. And the rest of them were saplings, you know, two, three inches at the most. They wanted a plea bargain of 12 years in. And if Will gets 12 years in, then I get five years in. Or I can take their deal and testify for the state against him. It, it seems so unconscionable for me to do that. I felt um, like I would be betraying. But somebody had to be here to raise these children. So I took their deal. Meg and Will agonized over their decision. But the only way for Meg to remain free, to care for the children, was to testify against her husband. So Will refused the plea bargain and opted for trial by jury. By an arbitrary decision of the court, the evidence of medical necessity was disallowed. He was given a mandatory 92 years. 
they took him in. And that's the last time I was with him when he wasn't behind a bar or behind a fence or whatever. In less than 30 seconds, my entire life was ripped apart. It's a long five-hour drive to see him. I got 70 years for cultivation. I got 20 years for having that marijuana in the presence of a child. I got two years for possession with intent. you in prison hoping that your family will forget about you uh, your friends will forget about you <laughs> you don't get to see your kids grow up it's a kind of uh, kind of hard <laughs> that's cool. that's how's kids they're 